Hello everyone and welcome. This is Oli Matthews from the Data School. Today I'm going to talk, be talking a little bit about using Tableau and Snowflake together. Now this is a sort of recap video as David Spezia gave a talk just last week at the Tableau conference on this topic. So I've just taken a few of the ideas from that and um, hopefully you can work through some of the examples and show off some of the features. So as David Spezia started out, I think it's very useful to consider this diagram here. It's always good to bear in mind what's happening behind the scenes when we are interacting with our business. So initially we might um, interact with our dashboard or viz in some way on the browser. This will then go back to the server um, and be interpreted. And then queries, SQL queries, will be sent back to the main database, uh, which might be Snowflake, which are then run in order to return the data from the database, uh, which in turn generates the model and then renders the viz and then sends this visual information back to the browser, and then we can see what we expect to see when we've interacted with the viz. So why is this useful? This is particularly useful because, um, of course, at multiple, at the different stages um, on this diagram, we can change and influence things, uh, if we like, uh, to uh, influence the front end, um, what we're seeing uh, in the browser at the end. So um, we'll start by looking at this um, this section here, when the queries are sent um, from from Tableau to the database. Tableau does this amazingly well. That's one of its key features. That's how it works. But um, sometimes this is not um, completely optimal, uh, and sometimes <coughs> we want Tableau to do things that it's not inherently able to do. So if we're using Tableau and Snowflake as a data source, we can actually use some of the Snowflake features in Tableau to get it to do things that it's not, um, wasn't originally able to do and now can do, um, which is pretty cool. So let's start looking at some of these things. So jumping over to Snowflake now, one of the cool things that we can do is actually query JSON data, unstructured data, directly without first having to convert it to a tabular form. So as you can see here at the bottom, I do have some raw JSON data, which has come straight out of an API. And this is actually um, call out to the Los Angeles Police Department in 2021. So with the right syntax, we can actually pull out some of this information. So if we just look at one I prepared earlier here, if we just select the column in question, um, followed by a colon, and then um, what we want to bring out from the table, this should give us a list of the area OC, which is, um, I think, of course, um, the area that the incident occurred in. So let's just try this. And there we go, perfect. So as you see here, we have a nice list of um, all the different I think police districts um, in Los Angeles where incidents have occurred in this particular um, data sample that we've got. Okay, so now if we jump over to Tableau, we have the same table that we just used with our data JSON. And we can actually do the same thing in Tableau. So um, we do this um, with custom SQL. So we just click on our data source, we click convert to custom SQL, and then we can see exactly the query that Tableau has used to get the data from our Snowflake database. So if we get rid of this, put in um, what we just had. Now I have added um, one more thing just to get a bit more data out. So originally we asked just for the um, area OC. Um, I've also asked it to bring me back the incident number as well um, from our table. Um, and what we might also want to do here 
is um, give these these columns that are going to be generated names. So maybe we want to call this area, and we might want to call incident number, and then we might want to call it incident number. Hopefully this will work. Mm, okay, I think we need to add in some double quotes instead. There we go, perfect. Let's just update our data. Cool, so now we can see areas, incident numbers, and we can create things with this. I want to see a list of districts and then a count of the incident numbers to see how many there have been in each area. Um, yeah, so of course, like you might, you may not always want to do this. Um, normally, I would advise um, converting your JSON data, flattening it in, in Snowflake, which you can find out how to do um, in numerous tutorials um, to get your data in a nice tabular form. But um, you know, one use case for this might be you've got some raw JSON data coming in via an API on, say, the weather, um, and you want to just quickly join that to your data set, something you're working on. You can quickly pull it in bring up custom SQL, um, and then, yeah, query the instructor data directly, and off you go. Pretty cool. Right, so jumping back over to Snowflake again. So when we're thinking about um, SQL queries being sent from Tableau to Snowflake, um, one thing we should bear in mind is that Snowflake actually has a more extensive library of SQL functions than Tableau. So we can actually um, use um, and do things in Snowflake um, that we wouldn't normally um, be able to do in Tableau. Um, but of course, with the integrations, um, we can actually um, use some of these features in Tableau, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but first on here, I'm just going to show you an example of one such function which um, is not native to Tableau, which um, can be used in Snowflake. So, first of all, uh, let's just run this. Perfect. So, um, what we're doing here is we're doing a count distinct of incident numbers from, um, this is the big data set that we um, have from combining all our JSON and putting it into a nice table format. Um, so, we've got about 13 and a half million rows um, in this data set. Um, and, of course, we're doing count distinct um, of the incident number. So this is the number of different incident numbers that we have in this data set, 13,594,000. Um, now, of course, by modern standards, this is not a very big data set, um, just a few million. Um, so running this query is no issue at all. We've run it the first time, and it's taken less than two seconds to give us our result. However, if we were dealing with much larger data sets, billions, trillions of rows, um, and executing lots of queries, um, we might want to optimize a bit more. So one of the functions that we have in Snowflake um, to help with this is something called approx count distinct, approximate count distinct. And what this will do is use a pretty clever, clever algorithm to guess at um, the, uh, the count distinct. So let's just add this in here and see what we get. So I also want the approx count distinct of the incident number. Let's try this. Cool. So now we can see. We have our actual count distinct and our approximate count distinct. So 13,594,000 versus 13,381,000. Of course, it's not exactly the same. It's approximate. Um, but as you can see, the numbers are pretty close. So sometimes this is um, good enough. Um, so yeah, I haven't really got a big enough data set here to show you the saving in time. Um, but if you go over to David Spezia's um, talk, uh, video for Tableau Conference, you'll see that 
using the approach canceling is often six, ten times as fast. So it can be useful. But anyway, there are others um, which you can look on the documentation. Um, and also you are, if you want, able to, um, in Snowflake, create your own um, <laughs> queries, functions, uh, and also even write stuff in other languages such as JavaScript as well to manipul manipulate your data, which someone um, might do a video on another time. So of course, yes, we can use this here. Can we use it in Tableau as well? Yes, we can. So let's see this in action in Tableau. We have the same data set that we just had in Snowflake here with all our incident numbers. So pretty straightforward um, to use um, these SQL functions in, sorry, Snowflake SQL functions in Tableau. All we need to do is create a calculated field. Let's call this prox count distinct incident number. So what we want here is raw SQL ag followed by the data type. Um, and then we start with our SQL function. So prox SQL query distinct. Um, now we can just use um, a placeholder here of what we want it to call this function on. So let's do percent one for the placeholder. Okay, comma, and then incident number. Close brackets to end the function, and okay. And that's worked. And if I add this to the view, we now see we now see the value of the whole data set, the approximate count distinct of um, incident numbers. Perhaps one of Snowflake's best features is its time travel feature which allows us to look at the data um, at a previous point in time. So this, of course, allows us to look at the data five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, an hour ago, a week ago. Um, obviously, um, this is great um, if we want to um, recover data that's been corrupted or lost um, quickly. Um, but one more use case of this um, is also um, if we want to restrict um, someone um, from seeing live data, for example. So we could always include the time travel um, on the data set of um, where people are seeing the data to give it an offset of 10 minutes. So maybe some departments can see the live data, some departments can't see the live data, things like that. So... Um, Having a look at this time travel feature um, and how it can be used in Tableau. First, um, I'm just going to select some data. Um, so continuing on with the LAPD theme, this is all the different core codes um, uh, and descriptions for all the incidents. So what I'll do first is I'm going to um, add in some data, insert some data, a new row. So if I'm going to add in a new call type code here, just to change the data. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be a 001 test. Awesome. So that should now be in our data set when we select Oh, I'm going to be able to see it on here easily. Um, here it is, actually. Uh, row 1036, call type code 1, test 111. So um, if we want to look at use the time travel feature to see data in the past, we just do our usual select statement um, and then add at with an offset 
um, equal sign greater than, so the arrow. Then we want minus 60, the number of sec seconds, um, multiplied by however many minutes. So if we do 60 seconds multiplied by 30, of course, half an hour ago. Awesome. So, yep, if we see here now, our new code is no longer there. So pretty straightforward. A lot of you might already be familiar with this. So let's see it in action in Tableau. So let's have a look at our call tab codes. Awesome. So this has um, the row we added in earlier, our test, test call type of one. So we, from this, we know that we're looking at the live data. So pretty straightforward. If we want to use time travel in Tableau, we can use custom SQL once again. This is the current SQL statement that's being used to generate our data. Get rid of that, add in our own one that we used earlier. So we want to select everything from our table um, at an offset of 30 minutes. OK. As you can see, our, our row that we added in, our new call type code, the test, disappears as <coughs> it was created um, less than half an hour ago. Cool. Um, now, yeah, I think this is a really powerful feature um, that has a lot of use cases um, and is really, really useful, especially when things go wrong. Um, one other cool thing that we can do here is we can make it dynamic. So if I create a parameter, um, let's actually just call this um, time period, for example. Um, let's just current value of one. Let's show this. Cool. So yep, here we can add in our own our our own value. Go back to our custom SQL. And what we need to do here is instead of multiplying um, <coughs> 60 seconds by 30, we can multiply it by our time period. Okay. Up there now. Now, we haven't really got anything in the data set to show this off, but um, we can look at it in the shorter term. So if we're looking one minute ago, our row's there. If we're looking half an hour ago, our row's not there. If we're looking one hour ago, our row's not there. If we're looking five minutes ago, our row is back. So again, you could use this a number of different ways. Um, I think it's really cool and really dynamic um, and potentially very powerful. I think that's all we've got time for today. I hope you find these Snowflake features useful in Tableau. Thank you for listening and I will see you next time.